Welcome to a new section on variable discretization. So what is discretization? Discretization is the process of transforming continuous variables into discrete variables, and we do so by creating a set of continuous intervals that span the value range of the variable. So in essence, we have a continuous variable with a certain distribution, and what we do is we delimit intervals that start at some value and end at some other value, and then we sort the variable values into these intervals. So you probably also heard the term binning. It's an alternative name for discretization, where a bin is each one of these intervals. It is common to treat the discretized variable as if it was a categorical variable, and you will often see discretization coupled with one-hot encoding or ordinal encoding. And I will say a lot more about discretization plus encoding towards the end of this section. But first, I want to share with you some of the advantages of discretizing your variables. Discretization may improve the model performance, and we will see why in a minute. It can also reduce the training time of the machine learning algorithms, it can mitigate the effect of outliers, and it can also create simple features that we, people, can easily understand. So discretization and performance and training time. Some machine learning models, like decision trees and naive Bayes, work better with discrete attributes. In fact, focusing on decision trees, which are probably the algorithms you're most familiar with, make decisions based on discrete partitions over the variables. So during training, a decision tree will take a feature, it will evaluate all possible values of that feature, and then it will decide which is the best cut point, the one that maximizes the purity of the end branches, if you want. So the more values the variable has, the longer the training time of the decision tree because it has to examine more values. So when we discretize a variable, we are naturally reducing the number of values. Therefore, we are accelerating the training time of decision trees. There are different discretization methods, and we'll see more about that in the next video, but some of the methods can improve the value spread of the variable. So if we have a skewed variable like the one that we see here, and we select the correct discretization method, we can improve the value spread so that now we have a more even distribution of the observations across all intervals. And this may help improve the performance of some machine learning models. Discretization also mitigates the effect of outliers, because if we have values that are much bigger or much smaller than the majority of the distribution, they will be naturally allocated to the extreme intervals and therefore now this value is no longer different than the rest of the bigger or smaller values of the distribution. But there is no free lunch in machine learning, so discretization also has some limitations. In fact, discretization can lead to a loss of information of that variable, because we are in essence summarizing all the values of the variable into a few discrete intervals. So we could end up combining values that are strongly associated with different classes of the target or different averages of the target into the same bin, and then we are losing the information these values provide. So the aim of a discretization algorithm or a discretization method is to find the minimal number of intervals without a significant loss of information. And as I said, there are several discretization methods. Now, in practice, many of the discretization procedures require us to input the number of intervals that we want. So the job of the algorithm is then to find the cut points for those intervals. So in the next video, we're going to go over the main discretization algorithms and some of their characteristics. See you in a bit.